Hello my tarot friend, today we are going to dive into my astrology chart. I got inspired by Neve at Neve Witch where she shared with us her zodiac or her horoscope chart through different decks. So I thought the easiest way to show you my chart is by using this deck and by showing the aspects of my chart through this deck. This is Heavenly Bodies Astrology deck by Lily Ashwell. This is a magnificent deck for somebody who wants to start learning astrology because you have keywords on each card and then she made them in a way where you can put them together like sentences and I'll show you how to do that. And it's really easy to start understanding all the aspects of the astrology. Now I will share with you my signs in different planets and in which houses they appear. And for each one, I'll tell you what each planet represents, what energy does it hold, what is the energy of the sign, characteristics of the sign, and also what is the house about. So let's just start, shall we? I'm going to start with my sun. So what is sun all about? Sun is about self-expression. It is how we embody our truths. Now I have my sun in Taurus. And Taurus is all about patience, trust, sensuality, beauty, slow moving pace, being very grounded and rational and determined to achieve whatever we put into our heads. Some people would call this stubbornness. I don't. <laughs> and then I have my son in Taurus in the seventh house. Now, what is the seventh house all about? The seventh house is where we explore our capacity for partnership and long friendships. The keywords for the seventh house are I balance. So what is house seven all about? House seven is about profound relationships in our lives. It's about intimacy, also romantic partnerships. The keywords for house seven are I balance. So how do you balance those things? So how you can put these keywords here together would be I self-express and embody my truth through trust, patience, and sensuality, especially in the realm of profound relationships, intimacy, and romantic partnerships. And the deck that I chose for this is the Modern Love Tarot. Now, why is that? I feel the Modern Love Tarot, for some reason, has a very down-to-earth energy. It is all about, obviously, relationships, that how seven is all about. Every card is very honest and expresses the truth perfectly like very directly very obviously and i feel that the energy of these three aspects together is beautifully represented in this deck i just feel it embodies that energy of taurus of house seven and of self-expression of those energies very well so this is the modern love tarot that i associate with my taurus energy that expresses itself in within relationships, right, of any kind. So this is my first aspect of my chart. Next, we're going to look into the moon. What is the moon about? The moon is about satisfaction of our emotional needs, how we nurture ourselves and how we nurture others. I have my moon in Libra. And Libra is all about consideration, about fairness and harmony in your life and in the life of others. It's also about beauty, so how you see your, your own beauty and the beauty of the world, because it's governed by Venus, right, which is all about that, and harmony and love. And I have my Libra in house 12, and house 12 is related to spirituality, transcendence, our karma as well, sacrificial service, and also healing. The 12th house is very complex. In this house, we find the endings required to clear the way for our new beginnings. The key words for the 12th house are, I believe. So, I satisfy my emotional needs, nurture myself and others through being considerate, through fairness and harmony. And this is the most seen in the aspect of my life in spirituality, transcendence when I'm dealing with my karma, when I'm doing sacrificial services, to myself and to others and when I'm in the process of healing and the deck that the best put these energies together is Tarot of the She. Why I chose this deck? This is the deck that I use when I am dealing with any type of healing or my karma or um, connection to spirituality, right? This is the deck that is very balanced in my opinion, very well balanced in masculine and feminine in all the oppositions in life. I also feel this deck is very harmonious in its energies. I feel you have a really good balance between the elements. 
this deck hits my emotions really hard. So whenever I use this deck, I feel really, really deep emotions. So this is why I chose this deck. It might feel a little bit dark as well, but that's because House 12 is also about karma and sacrifice and stuff like that. So I feel this deck expresses these three energies beautifully. So the moon, Libra, which is all about balance and fairness. And this deck is very fair. So if you have to look at something in your life, it definitely is going to show you that. It's not going to be, you know, sugar coated or anything. It's going to be straight to the point. This is what you need to do. This is the fair the right thing to do in your life right now either for yourself or for others right and even though it is really good for connecting to your roots like dealing with karma the things that you need to deal with in order to move on it is also an amazing deck to connect to the other worldly beings to connect to something higher than yourself and it is one of my favorite decks in my tarot family. So it actually makes sense because the moon is all about that deep emotion, isn't it? So yeah, and I love, <laughs> love this deck so very much. I am so grateful that it is a part of my life. So this was my moon in Libra in the 12th house deck. The next planet we're looking at is Mercury. And Mercury is all about thinking, about learning, about networking and communication. It symbolizes our mental switchboard, how we think, how we communicate and move through the world, right? And I have my Mercury in Taurus. And Taurus, again, I talked about Taurus before, it's about trust, patience, sensuality, and other things that I mentioned before. And again, I have it in the seventh house. So I have two Tauruses or I'm Taurus twice in my Sun and in my Mercury and both time in the house seven, which is all about relationship, intimacy, deep connection, friendships, etc. So I think learn, network and communicate through trust, patience and sensuality within profound relationships and partnerships. So that makes a lot of sense because I do love connecting and talking to people that I feel really connected to. Basically, I trust and I'm patient and open only within really deep relationships. I also love communicating on a really deep level. I don't like small talk and I have a very small amount of good friends, like I would say maybe five and obviously my partner and that's it i don't have many people in my life with whom i would really feel connected on a deep level where i would communicate with them about my passions about my ideas about tarot for example which is my biggest interests and passions yes and tauruses to be honest i feel i generally quite closed people when it comes to sharing <laughs> which also makes a lot of sense here now let me show you which deck are connected to these energies. So communication, networking, patience, sensuality, trust within profound relationships. I connect those energies, those aspects to the Herb Crafters Tarot. And why do I feel this way? I feel this deck is super duper communicative. If you get to trust and know it and if you're patient with it, you're going to build a huge profound relationship with this deck if you allow it. Honestly, I feel this is the most underrated deck on the market at the moment. I feel a lot of people don't take the time with it. They don't stay patient and they don't try to learn slowly with it, but they just try to use a shortcut as, as opposed to understanding and knowing it. And it is such a profound, huge deck if you allow it, honestly. The relationship I built with this deck is immense. The depth to every single detail in this deck is significant. Every single thing on this deck is put there with purpose. There is not one thing, color, energy, shade, sun, sunlight, whatever, in this deck, even, even jewelry, even the um, nail polishes, like every single detail, the color of the whatever towel here, is there, is there on purpose, the clouds, everything, every little thing, even the way it's, it's the brush strokes are on the paintings or pictures. It's incredible. It will deliver so much if you guys allow it. So um, I feel this deck perfectly represents the energy of this tree. How communicative 
it is, but only through trust, patience and sensuality within like the realm of intimate relationships because you either have an intimate relationship with this deck or you don't have any relationship at all. You can't just pull it out, never, never study it or take time with it and think that it's gonna do a thing for you because it won't. You need to take time with it. So this is a perfect deck for these three um, aspects together. So the Herb Craft is true. Next planet that we have here is Venus. And what is Venus all about? Venus symbolizes your heart, romance and creative process. It's what attracts you, what you value and how you value yourself. I have my Venus in Aries and Aries is all about independence, bravery, passion, but also initiation. I'm not sure why the keyword initiation is not here because Aries is known for starting things, not necessarily finishing things, but being very passionate about new projects, new things in life. And then I have my Aries, well, I have my Aries in Venus in the house five. And house five is all about our passions. It what creates play in our life, where we are creative. It's where we were as children, you know, because children are very creative and expressive, right? So it's all about uh, being confident in your creativity, confident in how you express yourself. I love that because, I mean, this is so true for me. So I give, I give and receive love and find value and see beauty through independence, being brave and passionate and initiative in the realm of my passions, my creativity, my play, um, my creative passions, where I express myself. The deck that represents these energies is the Margarete Peterson Tarot. I think it goes without saying why. <laughs> Margarete Peterson is just such a creative deck. The art has been created by a very long period of time. So it shows, it, it has that energy of, I know who I am and I know what I'm expressing here. Because the author, the artist and author, Margarete Peterson, took her time to really show us what she wanted here. It goes without saying that it's a very creative and very playful. It shows its, like I said, confidence and her passion shines through it. It definitely holds the energy of initiation because it is a very different type of deck. Like she started and did something very different in the Tarot world, especially in the time that she created this. And to me, it is absolutely beautiful and so valuable in my Tarot family. It brings a very, very different aspect into the meaning of each card. I love it so much. I feel this, well, this this is the Empress card. So yeah, it is Venus and it's, it has a, such a Venus energy, don't you think? I don't know, it just with these two cards together, it just does something, it's beautiful. I don't think I have much more to say here. I think it's very self-explanatory why this deck represents Venus in Aries in the house five. So yeah, this is the Margarita Peterson Tarot that represents the aspects in my Venus. So the next planet we're going to look into is Mars. What is Mars about? Mars speaks of independence, enterprise and willfulness, aggression, passion, action and defenseness. When I say defenseness, it includes your body's defensemen, such as your immune system, right? It's also about moving forward. And I have my Mars in Pisces. Pisces is a very interesting, <laughs> very interesting zodiac sign. Pisces are all about intimacy, intuition and compassion, but so much more. Pisces also deal with issues of destiny, karma and the personal shadow. And I have my Pisces in house four. And house four is all about your roots, about your family, about, oh, you know, because obviously position of all these planets and aspects was there when you were born. So the house four is all about that, how your home was when you were born or in your early childhood. So it's to do with your culture as well, how you're brought up, your family roots, your home. But it's also connected to peace and harmony. So based on how your home life was, that's then how you create peace and harmony in your life. So it stems from your childhood. So I have Mars and Pisces in the house four. So that means I move forward and defend myself and defend others through intuition, compassion, intimacy, and diving really deep 
especially in the realm of house four, so of cultural um, and family roots, of where I find peace and comfort. Home generally is very important to me and feeling rooted and feeling at home. I was really lucky that my home was very stable when I was a child. I feel very strongly about it. And perhaps because of that, I have a really good intuition to where and how I can create that peace and comfort for myself. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, <laughs> the deck that I connect to this energies here is Witch's Wisdom. As you know, this is one of my favorite decks and really it makes me feel at home. That's why I chose this deck. I'm very passionate about this deck and it helps me move forward and defend um, what I stand for. I also feel very intimately towards this deck. It helps me awaken my intuition so much, this deck. I can't explain it. At the beginning, I kind of struggled with it when I, when I got it. I loved it, like uh, something within me really loved it. But it, with my mind, I didn't understand why. I knew that the pictures were beautiful, but it was kind of hard for me to read because I didn't allow the intuition to come through. I was caught in those paradigms of what each card should mean. And then I just let go of that and I was like, let me just let the deck speak to you. And I did. And then when I allowed it to just speak to me, all those energies that right there came together and it awakened my intuition. It helped me be compassionate for myself and for other people when I read with this deck. When I ask questions about my relationship with other people, right, with my friends, family, it makes me feel compassion for others as well, which is very interesting. And it makes me connected to my culture. And my culture is a very interesting one because obviously I am a European, right? I come from a country called Slovenia. We have our culture, but when I say my culture, I did a DNA test and a huge portion, huge, enormous, portion of my DNA was of Celtic heritage, so of Northern Europe and of British Isles. I have the last eight generations from British Isles, which is very interesting. And then the rest of the DNA was from completely different cultures. But this was the biggest part of it. And that's why I feel so deeply connected to paganism and to witchcraft and to connection to nature and to dru druidism. Is it druidism? To druidcraft. <laughs> to everything natural and nature connected. To the animals. Huge connection to the animals. Huge connection to plants. To elementals. So yes, I feel this deck represents these three energies very well. And I'm very passionate about this as well, because Mars is also about that, you know, movement forward, but also about passion and about taking action and enterprise and feeling independent. And this deck really makes me feel all those things. So this is the Witch's Wisdom Tarot. And I truly, truly suggest it to anyone that is connected to all those things that I was saying, because you just need to allow it to speak to you. You just should step out of that paradigm what Tarot is and how the card should follow each other. And people would argue that this is an oracle deck, but no, it has the Tarot structure. It really does. It just, the numbers of the journey are reversed. And everything in life is polarity anyway. Like, how do you know what is up and what is down? If you look at the earth in the space, you don't know what is up and what's down. Because at some point in space, you know, it's it's a sphere. If you're on the top of the world, you don't know if you turn this way, this way, this way. What is up? What is down? What is forward? What is backwards? We don't really know. We just think we do. So <laughs> I'm being too philosophical here. But anyways, Mars energy coming through for me. <laughs> Next planet here, we have Jupiter. Okay, Jupiter is all about growth and expansion. It symbolizes how we expand our world through education, law, philosophy, travel, experiences, expansive spirit, abundance, and everything else. So it expands our view, pers our perspective of the world and the universe and of ourselves. And I have my Jupiter in Cancer. And Cancer is all about nurture, comfort, protection, emotions, depths, depths of emotions, I'm going to say, and also family-oriented. And I have this in the house 9. 
and house 9 is very expensive as, as well. It's about exploring philosophies, art, religion and culture. The keywords of the 9 house are I perceive and it says on this card that it's spiritual growth but it's more than just spiritual growth. It's expansion of your mind and spirituality and everything you believe in the ninth house so it's very interesting because jupiter is about that life and also house nine is about that life house nine is often connected to sagittarius which is all about that sagittarius is, can never be in one place for too long they want to grow and expand all the time so they like to change their environment continuously and communicate with people share information and all that and it's very interesting I have this in Cancer. So I grow and expand through nurture, comfort, protection, depths of my emotions or showing or no, feeling the emotions in the realm of spiritual growth and expansion. So that would mean that looking after others that I care about and looking after uh, my own emotions as well helps me expand and this can happen through, you know, studying things like Tarot, studying spirituality, studying self-help methods or spiritual development books, you know, chakra systems, different metaphysical things, really. So this all makes a lot of sense because I feel very deeply towards these things, very, very deeply. I'm very emotionally invested in expansion of myself, in expansion of my horizons. I think that that's one of the reasons why I moved out of my own country, which has a very limiting mindset about the world and about other cultures and people, etc., religions. And I moved into the most multicultural city in Europe, which is London, because I wanted to expand and grow and experience more than just what my country and my culture there could offer me. And the deck that expresses that very beautifully for me is the Wheel of Change Tarot. Now this deck really helps one expand their mind and how they perceive things in life. It is a deck that so much research was put into this deck on so many different levels. The author, Alexandra G, looked into different cultures around the globe. She looked into different scientific theories. She looked into different historical things, like let's say uh, ancient Egyptian rituals and spiritual connections, etc, etc. And also there's a lot of pagan practices or theories in this deck. I love it as well because it helps me expand my knowledge on each card because every card here, you could read it like you read any Rider Waite Smith or Rider Waite Smith slash thought deck because she mixed all of the different systems together. She didn't just base it on one, which is another thing, like it helps you expand, right? You're not stuck in the Rider Waite Smith structure but you expand over. But not only that, you can use those, you know, um, definitions of the cards, whatever, what they represent to mean. But then you have so much symbolism in every single card and the book that comes with this deck, or actually you need to purchase it separately, is so deep. I mean, every card has pages and pages of details of not only what different things on the card represent, but also how you can read this card when it comes up in a reading. So you can see influences of thought here because you have this three yellow dots here that um, appear in the thought deck, actually. Um, but anyway, this deck is so amazing. It's just so good. Like, it's another one that pers a person needs to take time with, like the Herb Crafters Tarot. But I think if you do, you're going to be rewarded and it's going to help you expand your knowledge and your understanding of Tarot and of different aspects of different historical happenings. I can't remember the word for happening. I'm sorry. Yeah, I see this Wheel of Fortune. It is so different, but it makes so much sense. Oh my God. Um, so yeah, this deck is becoming one of my favorite decks. I am still studying it. I'm not even close to understanding everything because it takes time. Like I said, it takes a lot of time, but I feel it is so worth it. I'm sure it is not a perfect deck because none, none of the decks are perfect. I'm sure there's some things in it that perhaps because it was done, this deck was done in the 90s or 80s. And she was researching it before that, right? So that's when it was first published. It is possible that some things 
that she wrote in the book are outdated, I'm gonna say, or don't apply to, to things how they are in this world now but i would say that most of the things probably still do so yeah if you feel drawn to it i highly suggest it and the book can be bought in the kindle version so you're not paying too much money for it it's i think it's four pounds or something like that in kindle version really not expensive maybe five it is absolutely incredible and it expresses these energies here of expansion and emotional connection comfort nurturing protection very very well oh it also holds the energy of the triple goddess in in it so well so yeah this is the will of the change throw she says actually on the box that the only constant in life is change and i love that so much it's so true okay we are at the challenging planet now and that is saturn well saturn what is saturn all about saturn rules that which we must build over time bones teeth personal authority maturity borders discipline traditions organization it is the last planet seen with the naked eye it forms a challenging aspect of yourself every seven years which is very interesting and on the card we see it says feel feeling restricted experiences struggle learn hard work and patience so i have the next three planets in capricorn so it might not be too interesting here <laughs> but yeah saturn i have in capricorn which is about ambition being realistic really grounded having methodical steps towards what you want to achieve and i have this in house three and house three is connected to early childhood learning childhood relations the rational mind and communication the third house gives us information about our social relationship and childhood development the keywords of this house are i think you ask yourself a question here what enchants your inner child and engages your attention how can you best sustain focus and following through without falling prey to boredom so this is what house three is all about so something that awakens your inner child, something that really awakens you and keeps you motivated and helps you follow through with a plan that you create or with something that you want to do. It also influences your rational mind and how you communicate. So I feel restricted, I experience things and my strugglings and learn hard work and patience through my ambition, through realism and using methodical steps especially in the realm of house three which is in early learning and childhood relations so everything that is related to my childhood in my communication in things that spark that ambition to push through or to finish off things that i started let's say so that makes a lot of sense so whenever i am in uh, life situations that are challenging and through which then I develop things that take time. So discipline, tradition, organizations, being mature. I do approach those things in a very Capricorn energy. So I will make a plan how to deal with certain things. I will stay very grounded and realistic. I will take methodical steps and I will definitely uh, follow through it if it sparks something that connects me to, now, to my inner child. That... Um, curiosity or so maybe the way i learned things as a as a child if circumstances remind me of that if that in me gets triggered it's easier for me to actually push through this saturn energy or circumstances that the saturn brings into my life okay so the deck that i chose to represent these energies here is the new era elements to row and i feel that this deck has a very saturn and capricorn energy to it it is very realistic. It represents the problematics of the nowadays society, basically. Of course, it's not all bad. It also shows the positive sides of humanity, but it shows things that there are things that sometimes I feel as humanity we are not dealing with and we should be dealing with. We don't have any challenging cards coming through yet, but this is one of them, for example. And I feel this is a very Saturn return type of energy and also a capricorn approach is needed in order to face with things like that now of course for me following through hard stuff in life is easier or i can deal with it better when it's to do with my early learnings and childhood relations right so if it triggers that in me 
I don't know, my inner child energy. I don't know. It's hard to explain. But yeah, I feel this deck represents this very, very well. It's perfect for these energies together. It makes sense then why this is one of my favorite decks to use to read for others. Um, because often people that come to you come with struggles in life. They don't come, oh, wow, the moon and death <laughs> when I'm talking about this. But yeah, they come to you when they're going through difficult changes in their life or when they have to heal some parts of themselves, right? And I feel this deck really helps with that. And it's a very direct and honest deck that will give you, it will tell you things as they are. And it will also offer you a very methodical approach to your situation. And it will trigger, you know, the inner child in you. It will, because we are a society of humans and we're all dealing with this stuff. And some things stem from our childhood, right? So yes, this is a perfect deck to represent these energies for me. Next planet we have is Uranus. And Uranus is about radical changes. You know, it governs Scorpio, right? So it's all about change transformation. I have my Uranus in Capricorn and Capricorn we talked about what it means and we talked about what house three means. So I deal with radical change through ambition, realism and met methodical steps in the realm of early learning, childhood relations, etc. So Uranus and Saturn to me have kind of similar energy because when you're dealing with what Saturn brings to you, at the end of the day, you will go through radical change, right? Uranus acts like a cosmic clutch. So it takes us out of one gear and after some chaos shifts us into a new one. It symbolizes radical change, like I said. So I radically change in life through realism, methodical, I take methodical steps and realism and I'm quite ambition in my change. So whenever the change comes, I set goals in, okay, something's happening. This is not working anymore. So now the change is um, around the corner. How am I going to deal with this change? And I set the goals in what I want to achieve in that change. And of course, it helps me follow through if it triggers that um, inner child energy within me, the inner child, the way I learned as a kid. And the deck that represents these three energies together for me is the Wildwood Tarot. I feel this deck is all about that, about change. It is based on the Wheel of the Year, which is obviously all about change. Things change all the time through the, all, through the Wheel of the Year, right? And it has that um, Capricorn energy to it. It is very ambitious and realistic. It is super realistic. In this deck, so often the authors talk about what we're doing to Mother Earth and our consequences etc and it offers us steps how to achieve certain things um, and at the same time it triggers my early childhood learning i learned outside i was in the forest all the time i was talking to animals beings spirits forest spirits whatever you want to call it and it triggers this deck triggers that in me so i use this deck when i'm going through radical changes and when i want that methodical approach to life to what i should do next this this deck is perfect for these three energies together absolutely incredible and perfect for that and it's so beautiful as well but there is something very realistic about this deck even though it is painted and it's obviously you know paintings and or drawings but there's something very realistic about it even though it's showing the you know the forest beings in it and druids etc so this is the wildwood row and it helps me move through radical changes in life okay the next planet that we have here is neptune and neptune symbolizes how we float in the ocean of collective consciousness on a practical level, it signals water, liquids, oils, our supplies. On a challenging day, it shows how we avoid our daunting reality. So either through escapism, imagination, addictions, etc. And on a good day, it speaks of spirituality, imagination, psychic perception. To me, this Neptune energy is very Pisces-like. <laughs> but yeah, so I have Neptune in Capricorn in House 3 as well. <laughs> so I have three planets in Capricorn in House 3. So I'm going to focus on the 
positive aspect here because it says dreams and transcend. So I dream and transcend through ambition, realism, methodical steps in the realm of early learning, childhood relations, the rational mind and communication. The deck that I chose for this is Lovely Om and this deck definitely shows these qualities of dream world, of transcendent, of connection and spirituality. It can also be very um, escapism-like. So when you are dealing with things, you can dive into this deck and just pretend things don't exist and you exist in these cards. It also triggers my inner child because I have been meditating as a young child and been learning through that as well like I was applying my meditation and breathing exercises and connected to connecting to spirits and gods and whatever universe whatever you want to call it and I learned through that and I communicated through that the Capricorn energy here comes in because this deck also offers you even though it's very gentle and very lovely like it says very me methodical steps it tells you exactly what is going on in your life and then it offers you what your next step should be in a very direct and down-to-earth way, even though the deck itself is very dreamy-like and very transcendent, right? So again, this deck, these three energies come together for me in this deck perfectly. This is the lovely Om Taro, and it is so, so beautiful. It is thought-based mostly, although it also has the Rider Waite Smith influences in it. It is watercolor, which is one of my favorite mediums. No. It is my favorite medium. It's not one of my favorite. It's my favorite medium. And it's just so beautiful. And I love the cardstock on this. It came with these borders that are a bit thinner. But I still decided to cut them off because the paintings that just come through so much better when it's trimmed. At least in my opinion. The shuffling is amazing with this deck as well because it's a very heavy feel to it. And I love that. So it's very practical, very, you know very physically practical as well so that's very capricorn energy too i love practical things you know that will last long and that will be that i can use for a very long time i mean you can refer shuffle it too finally we're moving out to different houses and different signs here so pluto i have pluto in scorpio in house one now firstly what is pluto about Pluto symbolizes the use and abuse of power and the willingness to go through transformation, to be reborn again into your empowered divine self. It influences us to go into our own underworlds. Here they just use the word transform, transformation, which is very interestingly Scorpio is all about as well. Pluto governs Scorpio, so that's a very hardcore Scorpio energy right here in the first house. Now my ascendant is also Scorpio, so one can say that... Um, yeah, I have a lot of Scorpio energy within me just because of where it is positioned in my chart, you know. So Scorpios are very intense. They're very exposing and purging and renewing. So they will expose within themselves and with, with others things that need to be purged out and they will transform all the time in their lives. And um, I think Sadhana from Integrative Healing with Sadhana said one time that she respects people who chose to incarnate in the signs of Scorpio. <laughs> that made me laugh really hard. Um, and I have this in House 1. And House 1 is all about who you are, is about your ego, your self-image, how you approach life, how you enter life and how you exit life or enter and exit um, things in life. This is a very powerful Scorpio energy. I transform through intensity, exposing, purging and renewing, especially in the realm of self-image and how I approach life and who I am and how I am as a person. And what a better deck to represent these energies than the Marielle Tarot. <laughs> yeah, I think this, this is a deck that really helps one to move through different changes and different stages in one's life it helps you phase the darkness within yourself and then purge it out it helps you expose things that you maybe don't want to expose but the mary l deck is going to expose them anyway i think this deck has a very scorpio energy and if i remember co correctly i think that the creator of this deck is actually a Scorpio. Yeah, I will try to find information and write it in the description below if I can. But um, anyway, 
if she is or isn't the Scorpio in her sun sign, she definitely brought that Scorpio energy into this deck. This is one of my favorite decks of all time because the art is amazing, because the messages that it provides, because I suppose because this is my chart and uh, this, this represents this, which is the change and who I am, I suppose. <laughs> And it's funny because I have Ascendant in Scorpio as well, so yay. Um, yeah, what else can I say here? I think that, that no words need to be spoken here. I think that the images tell all that one needs to know with this energy. So yeah, this is the Mary Altero, which I could really easily just choose for my Ascendant too, but I chose a different deck for that because it also holds that energy for me. So I have my Ascendant, which is in Scorpio, also in House 1, and the deck that represents that as well, a Scorpio energy, is for me Tarot of Atara. Scorpios are known to be very intense, and Tarot of Atara, it's a very intense, and it also shows the energy of who Frida Kahlo was in a very amazing way. Like you can feel her spirit within these cards. Like you can understand who she was, how she approached life, how she approached art, how she expressed herself, how she self-expressed who she was and how the world saw her because obviously one still sees her because this was not done by her. This was done by Gabby Angus. She obviously sees her this way. So yeah, this deck expresses that um, rebirth Inten rebirth, intensity, purging of the energies that one needs to get rid of, of expressing them out of yourself so well. So yeah, I think this is a perfect deck for these two cards here. So this is Tarot Avatar. And now the last thing that I'm going to show with you from my chart is my North Node. And my North Node is in Aquarius. North Node is what you are destined to have, where you're destined to go, what you're destined to, destined to achieve. And Aquarius is all about originality, philanthropy and progressive imaginings, progressive thinking. Aquarius is the, are the people who feel out of place because they're so forward thinking that they are often seen within society as the odd ones, as the weird ones, as the special ones, I'm gonna say. Um, I love Aquarius and it's very interesting because my destiny is to, I suppose, develop those qualities to, to gravitate towards those energies and all my best friends in my life always were Aquarius. Like, it's incredible. Like most of the friends that I connected to on a very deep and spiritual level and there are my friends after years, like we're talking about 20 years. And even if I don't talk to them for years and we meet, I still feel the same towards them and they still feel the same towards me, are people who are born under Aquarius sun or perhaps have Aquarius rising or Aquarius moon sign. I forgot to mention that I have Aquarius in house four, which is about culture, family roots, home, peace, comfort, which again makes sense. I'm leaning towards, I'm searching for originality, philanthropy, progressive thinking, progressive imaginings in the realms of cultural and family roots, um, how I perceive peace and home and comfort, which makes so much sense. And a deck that could represent that is the Japaritza Tarot. The Japaritza Tarot is super duper forward thinking and very, very different to any decks that I have. It has the abstract art, but it's abstract in a very different abstract way. Like things are put together that you would like be, oh, what? So for example, here we have in the Stranger of Winds, we have this that looks like a snake, but it could also be some metal thing. We have vampire wings with faces on it. Like we have very forward thinking things. And if you spend your time with this deck, it will bring you insights that you only imagined and you're gonna get associations that are very different to a normal Rider Waite Smith card meanings, right? They would be similar, but you would get so much more from it. Like I feel it's very futuristic, if I can say this way. It's a, it feels like it's from a different time, you know, somewhere in the future. Yeah, this is definitely a very Aquarius uh, deck, <laughs> you know, a very creative, imaginative, progressive deck. I absolutely love it so much. It's beautiful. And now that I cut out, cut off the edges, 
it's a perfect size and i love that about this deck so much and this is my favorite card in the deck three of fire it's beautiful it's so beautiful aquarius energy look at this queen of tides this isn't, isn't this like Aquarius energy? Like Aquarius who drew a Queen of Tides this way. Or painted. You know, it's just, oh, it's so amazing. So yeah, this was my last deck actually. And the last aspect of my natal chart. So I hope that you enjoyed this. I found it very fun to do. It was very um, exciting to go through my chart because I love... Um, zodiac and horoscope and all that i've uh, studied it since i was a little kid or had um interest in it study it is a bit too big of a word because i never proper studied studied it i just always had a huge interest in it and explore and i've been exploring it since i was i think seven or something yeah thank you neve for creating this tag it was so much fun and i will leave you with that i hope that you have a wonderful day, night, morning, evening, whatever the time is where you are right now. And I hope I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.